इलेक्ट्रॉनिक मीडिया प्रोडक्शन एंड रिसर्च सेंटर ईएमपीआरसी ऑफ मध्य प्रदेश भोज ओपन यूनिवर्सिटी प्रेजेंट्स एन ऑडियो प्रोग्राम ऑन विजुअल इम्पेयरमेंट दिस ऑडियो प्रोग्राम विल बी यूजफुल टू द स्टूडेंट ऑफ बीएड स्पेशल एजुकेशन प्रोग्राम द टाइटल ऑफ ऑडियो प्रोग्राम इज सोशल स्किल्स फॉर स्टूडेंट विद डेफ ब्लाइंडनेस To deliver the lecture on this topic, we have invited our subject expert, Dr. Nora Griffin Shirley. She is a professor in the program of special education at Texas Tech University in Lubbock of Texas, in the United States of America. This audio program is recorded, edited, and presented by Amar Bahadur Yadav. Let's listen to the audio program. social skills for student with deaf blindness Hello dear listeners. I am a professor in the special education program in the Department of Educational Psychology and Leadership of the College of Education at Texas Tech University at Lubbock, Texas in the United States of America. In addition, I also coordinate the Orientation and Mobility Specialist program and I am the director of the Virginia Murray Sal Center for Research and Education in Visual Impairment. I have been teaching in a university system for over 20 years. I would like to thank M P Bose Open University for this opportunity today to speak to you about social skills of students with deaf blindness. The objective for today's lecture is to provide teachers of students with visual impairments information on the social skills of children with deaf blindness so they can provide suggestions to parents, teachers, and their students about improving their social skills. The vocabulary for today's lecture is 1. social skills. Wikipedia defines social skills as any skill facilitating interaction and communication with others. Social rules and relations are created through communication and changed in verbal and nonverbal ways. 2. Social skill training. Wikipedia defines social skills training as the instruction provided to teach and enhance socialization of students with visual impairments including deaf blindness 3 deaf blindness mcginnis and trifrey define deaf blindness as not having sufficient vision to compensate for loss of hearing and not having hearing to compensate for the loss of vision Others have added children who have an impairment of the distant senses vision or hearing as well as additional impairments and would benefit from being taught as a deaf blind child are also deaf blind co-active teaching commonly used when working with students with deaf blindness 
This teaching technique is where the teacher and student initially do everything together until the student can complete tasks by himself or herself. Now let's talk about social skills for children with deaf blindness. When considering this topic, some questions we may ponder about are, how does deaf blindness affect a child's socialization? What can teachers and caregivers do to assist children with deaf blindness to have meaningful social relationships with other people? What part does communication play in the socialization of children with deaf blindness? Hopefully, the content of this audio program will answer these questions. McGinnis and Triffy define deaf blindness as not having sufficient vision to compensate for loss of hearing and not having sufficient hearing to compensate for the loss of vision. According to Akin, Bukjins, Clark, Air, and Pease, in teaching children who are deafblind, deafblind also encompasses children who have an impairment of the distant sense, vision, or hearing, as well as additional impairments, and would benefit from being taught as a child who is deafblind. Deaf blindness ranges from those who are totally blind and deaf to those individuals who are low vision and hard of hearing. For the totally deaf and blind, the world has to be accessed through touch, while for those who have low vision and are hard of hearing, the world is seen and heard. The people around those with deaf blindness must provide information about their environment to the deaf blind child. Dr. Panini and Miss Rowell from Blind People's Association, in their book, Visual Impairment Handbook, state, The people in the environment of such children or adults must seek to include them, moment by moment, in the flow of life and in the physical environment that surrounds them. If they do not, the child will be isolated and will not have the opportunity to grow and to learn. If they do, the child will be afforded the opportunity to develop his or her fullest potential. They go on to suggest that good communication can best be thought of as conversations that employ body language and gestures. They go on to suggest that good communication can best be thought of as conversations that employ body language and gestures, as well as both signed and spoken words. A conversation with such a child may begin with a partner who simply notices what a child is paying attention to at the moment and finds a way to let the child know that his or her interest is shared. Touch is the key to communication with children who are deafblind. Parents and teachers can explore interesting objects with children with deafblindness or imitate the child's movements. Of course, the children would need to tactually explore the communication partner's movements. This exploration is akin to a parent imitating his sighted and hearing babies babbling. Atkin. Bookchins, Clark, Air, and Pease, in teaching children who are deafblind, stress the importance of a trusting relationship between an adult like a teacher of students with visual impairments and a child with deafblindness. This relationship can pave the way for positive relationships with others in the future. Coactive teaching is where the teacher and student are initially doing everything together until the child can complete tasks by himself. This instructional strategy is used to teach social skills to children with deaf blindness, as well as other skills. Activities of daily living, like toileting, bathing, and eating, are excellent opportunities for social skill training. Due to this dual sensory impairment, communication is a challenge. 
Communication methods are the first order of business when teaching students with deaf blindness. Teachers of students with visual impairments are responsible for teaching communication and social skills to students with deaf blindness to minimize behavioral and emotional problems they may exhibit. Effective social skill training is absolutely necessary. The teacher and student with deaf blindness need to be in constant dialogue with one another. This allows the student to integrate his senses in his environment. Task analysis, structured routines in the child's natural environment, and consistency allows the student to learn to make choices. Choice making enables a child to develop appropriate social skills leading to fulfilling relationships. Atkins, Buckchins, Clark, Ayer, and Pease, once again in teaching children who are deaf blind, suggests for students with deaf blindness, dressing and undressing is a means of communication. Students can learn about the use of clothing to express their desires. For example, a child may refuse to put on his shoes as he does not want to go outside. Teachers need to listen to this dialogue, reinforce the child's ability to communicate his desire, and recognize he is making a choice. This choice making gives a child with deaf blindness a sense of control over his life. According to Atkin et al., the act of dressing and undressing looks at many socialization concepts, such as body awareness and body image. In other words, which part of the body fits into the specific part of a garment? Awareness of others and identification of people. This is the recognition of name signs of the people who work and surround the child with deaf blindness. Emotions. This is self-esteem and graphic tactile communication. Interpersonal skills. This is the ability to recognize and to behave appropriately with friends and strangers. And finally, sex education. Knowing appropriate dressing at all times. Where and when to dress. When teachers are co-actively involved with students in dressing and undressing, teachers are modeling appropriate social behavior for the students and other people interacting with them. Students learn about appropriate and inappropriate touch and changes of their bodies as they age. Adapted from a case study by Atkin et al., the following case study illustrates the importance of students being taught appropriate social skills. When Anita began her placement in a school for deaf-blind people, she was three years old. Her developmental level was equivalent to a two-year-old. Anita was provided excellent instruction, so she progressed quite nicely. However, she did have a habit of hugging everyone she met. Even at eight years of age, Anita still hugged all staff and visitors in the school. Some of the adults were not receptive to this hugging. The staff taught Anita how to greet people. She was taught that some people who are strangers should be greeted with hello. Friends, she learned to say hello with a smile and to maybe touch. While those persons she loved, she could hug. Anita was positively reinforced every time she exhibited the most appropriate behavior towards family and school visitors. Teachers of students with visual impairments need to provide opportunities for students with deaf blindness to socially interact with others. To accomplish this, one can consider the physical environment students with deaf blindness exist in. The physical environments of students with deaf blindness are where social interactions can occur. Teacher of students with visual impairments need to identify the physical environments their students have access to. For example, the child's home, school, playground, temple, market. 
or a relative's house and foster communication within these environments. This can be accomplished by following the guidelines mentioned in the book, Volume 1 of Hand in Hand, by Dr. Kathleen Hubner, Dr. Jean Glidden Prickett, Miss Teresa Rafalowski, and Miss Elga Jaffe, published by American Foundation for the Blind in 1995 but still an excellent resource for learning to teach children with deaf blindness. They say, to expand teaching activities, teachers need to consult with the student's family to identify the family's priorities for activities and developing skill, the student's preferences and his current skills. For example, Mina likes to ride a tandem bike with her older brother. Next, teachers need to conduct an inventory of the recreational and vocational options available in the student's community. There is a local cyclist club in New Delhi that Mina can go to. The teachers need to determine the level of participation that is needed for an activity and the necessary adaptations. To become a member of the New Delhi Cyclist Club, Mina will need to be accompanied by a family member or friend for the first few meetings until the members of the club become acquainted with Mina and she is familiar with the club's mission and its activities. Finally, the teachers need to select a functional skill that is appropriate to a student and that the family has prioritized. Mina's parents would like her to find someone from the cyclist club to ride with Mina, other than just her older brother. They would like her to develop a social network with some of the cyclist club's membership. The environment for children who are deafblind should be engaging where communication is stressed and it should also have temporal regularity. Temporal regularity is when activities occur at the same time daily. We're talking about structure here. For example, the bus picks up Moham at his home at 7.30 a.m. every day. Lunch is served at 11.30 a.m. and the bus takes him home at 2 p.m. every day. This is structure. This is temporal regularity. Very, very important for children who are deafblind. An organized environment is also helpful to children with deaf blindness. Maintaining a clutter free space is important. Having an area where the student can call his own is a good idea, whether it is in the classroom or his home. Keeping objects like furniture in the same place is helpful for a child with deaf blindness mobility. If furniture does need to be rearranged, then it is a good idea to have the child with deaf blindness assist with the move. When engaging in an activity, it is important to keep in mind that the activity has phases. The planning or preparation phase, the active participation phase, and the termination or closure phase. Children who are deafblind need to be aware of each phase so they can anticipate what is required of them. The use of a calendar box system assists the child in knowing what his schedule is so he can anticipate the activity. For example, when given a plate, Jerry knows it is time to eat. He knows he must walk to the canteen to eat where he sits down and has the food placed on his plate by a canteen worker. Then he sits and eats his lunch and takes his plate to the sink to wash it and finally he travels back to the classroom and puts his plate back in the calendar box. Then he goes to the next section of his calendar box and picks up a braille book because now it is time for reading with braille. According to Hubner et al., teachers of students with visual impairments and deaf blindness need to consider the following when teaching social skills. 1. 
Communication should occur with many different people, including peers. 2. Communication exchanges should occur frequently. 3. All communication partners should know or be taught the student's forms of receptive and expressive communication, like gestures, sign language, and utterances. 4. During interaction, a systematic procedure should be used to expand the student's communication system. The importance of relationships with other classmates is crucial and can lead to lifelong friendships. Communication must be taught and be flexible to meet the needs of all communication partners, both sighted and deafblind. Hubner et al. suggests the following strategies to foster effective communication for students with deaf blindness with their peers. 1. Model peer like interactions with students who are deaf blind. The teacher uses a touch cue by tapping Dev on his left shoulder to let him know she wants to talk with him. The teacher has a name sign. She wears three gold necklaces, which she allows Dev to touch after she taps his shoulder to distinguish her from other people in Dev's life. 2. Teach classmates how to use a student's communication system. Dev's teacher shows his classmates daily some signs Dev routinely uses. 3. Teach classmates to recognize and interpret a student's communication. Learning when, how, and what a student who is deafblind is trying to say is important for the teacher to assist the student's classmates with. Also, the student with deaf blindness needs to know when his classmates are communicating with him and how to take turns to foster reciprocal communication with his classmates. Number four, have the student tell the class about his hearing and vision loss. What are the functional implications of both? For example, Dev told the class that he has been blind and deaf from birth due to his mother contracting rubella or German measles. Five, Encourage classmates to discover ways to communicate with the student who is deaf-blind. This activity fosters problem-solving for the student. What is Dev trying to communicate when he touches you on the left shoulder? <gasps> he is just trying to get your attention. He wants to talk with you. Number six. Have classmates volunteer to be peer tutors and buddies. Ashida is Dev's peer buddy. She helps him with getting materials ready for any activities. 7. For children with deaf blindness who use gestures, utterances, and body movements to communicate, classmates need to be taught that these communication modes are these children's way of communicating. Once classmates are aware of these communication modes, they will interact with one another. Here is a case study to illustrate what we have been discussing. Trevor, a seven-year-old, was born with retinal detachments and a severe hearing loss. He enjoys the playground, especially sliding and swinging. Trevor uses sign language to communicate. If frustrated, Trevor will yell and cry. His classmates were afraid the first time they saw Trevor acting out. But Mrs. Singh, his teacher, explained that this was because people didn't understand what Trevor wanted. Mrs. Singh taught Trevor's classmates some of the signs he uses. Trevor also assisted Mrs. Singh with this instruction. His classmates learning and using signs have helped reduce Trevor's acting out behavior. In conclusion, the long-term goal of socialization of students with deaf blindness is expanded relationships 
and community interaction. Goals of an educational plan may include an increase in friendships with peers, an improvement of the quality of interactions with people. For deafblind students, you may want to teach communication partners, people who can interact with a deafblind child on a regular basis, effective communication methods such as signs and gestures. In conclusion, the important points to remember from today's lecture are Number one, deaf blindness is defined not having sufficient vision to compensate for loss of hearing and not having sufficient hearing to compensate for the loss of vision. Two, commonly used when working with students with deaf blindness, coactive teaching is the preferred method when educating students with deaf blindness especially when giving instruction about social skills. Three, activities of daily living are a means of communication which teaches students about appropriate social interactions. Four, communication is crucial for students with deaf blindness. Fostering communications with peers is essential for students to develop satisfying relationships with others. 5. Teaching students with deaf blindness when and how to interact with others is a role of the teacher of students with visual impairments as well as caregivers and other educators of these children. 6. Students with deaf blindness environments should be engaging, structured, and organized. 7. Teachers and caregivers need to constantly dialogue and listen to students' communication efforts. Students need to be reinforced for these efforts. I hope you have gained some new information today that you can use in your work with students who are deaf-blind. Thank you for listening. You are listening to the audio program Social Skills for Students with Deaf Blindness. The subject expert and speaker was Dr. Nora Griffin Shirley. Announcer was Anuradha. This program was recorded, edited, and presented by Amar Bahadur Yadav. This audio program was a production of the Electronic Media Production and Research Center, EMPRC of Madhya Pradesh Bhoj Open University.